What's the most paranormal thing that has ever happened to you? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. My next door neighbor growing up was a friend of mine, and we had a kind of hangout spot in the patch of woods that ran behind our houses. We were about 14 and were experimenting with cigarettes, so that's where we went to hide. We were out there one day towards sunset and heard her grandmother calling to us. We panicked and put our cigarettes out so we wouldn't get caught, and as she called our names again, her voice sounded closer this time. That's when we realized that A, her grandmother lived at least three hours away and, to our knowledge, was not expected for a visit. And B, the voice was coming from deeper into the woods, not from our backyards. We freaked and dashed out of the woods to the safety of our yards, and as we ran, we heard her call out one last time, but her voice sounded different this time. Kind of deeper and angry sounding. We did not enter those woods ever again unless it was broad daylight, but we never heard anything like that again. Scariest experience of my life. My sister used to have some weird thing happening at a unit she rented many years ago. She told me stories, but I had never experienced it myself. One time while visiting her, that changed. We were watching TV, and I went to the kitchen to get a drink. I walked past the bathroom door, which was open. When I came back, it was closed. She hadn't left the sofa, and there was a dodgy tile on the bathroom floor where the door would get stuck. You would have to physically force the door over the tile. No wind, no noise, nothing. That's weird, I thought, but okay. Ten minutes later, we are both sitting there, and we hear this incredibly loud bang 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 on the door that goes to the backyard. Scared the living out of us and made us jump. We looked outside but couldn't see anything or anyone, no dog either. That seemed to be it for the evening, and after talking about it for a while, she went off to bed. I watched TV for a bit more and then decided to call it a day as well. I turned off the TV and stood up. As I'm about to walk away, I hear this noise of something heavy being dragged over wood. I look up, and she has this big dolphin statue on top of her TV cabinet. The statue is just slowly moving forward across the wood by itself. It went about 10 centimeters or so and just stopped. You could see scratches on the wood where it moved. I told her about it the next morning, and she wasn't surprised. The events in that house are the only time in my life I've ever experienced paranormal stuff in person and I have no rational explanation to this day. Not sure how paranormal you'd consider this, but about a year ago we moved to a new house in a rural area. Woods, open fields, and cows for the most part. Not long after we moved in, I was out in the yard with my German shepherd, who has since passed, R.I.P. Teddy, getting him to do his business before bed. It would have been about 8 to 9 p.m. in winter, so it was dark out. Maybe mid to low 40s temperature-wise. It was a clear night as far as rain or snow goes, and there was no ice. I was standing in the yard just enjoying the peace and quiet when I heard wind chimes coming from the side of my house. I felt the hairs on the back of my neck stand up, and I called my dog and hurried back inside. The creepy part of it? We don't own wind chimes. I never heard it again, and I don't know what it could have been. I sometimes see lights driving down the vacant wooded roads that look like headlights crossing the street from a crossroads, but when I approach the spot, there is no crossroad, just woods. Or headlights coming toward me that disappear as they dip down a hill, but when I crest it and approach, they're just gone with no turnoffs around. Weird things in the woods. Where I live, there are so few untouched places of nature left, civilization just keeps crawling further and further and taking away those unspoiled natural places. I think things that once were spread out are now forced into smaller areas of wood. I don't think they're happy about it either. First night in my first apartment. I didn't have a bed, so I slept on the couch in the living room. Had a nightmare that someone with a knife was going down the hallway. Just as they got to the living room door, I woke up. I jumped in my car and spent one more night at my parents. Two months later, my roommate falls asleep on the same couch. Next morning he tells me about a dream he had about a guy coming down the hall with a knife. Just as he got to the door, my roommate woke up. A few months later, a friend asks if he can crash for a night. Sure, he can sleep on the couch. Next morning he says he had a weird dream. I said, guy coming down the hall with a knife? My roommate added, you woke up just as he got to the door? Dude went the palest shade of white I ever saw. I'm convinced the house I lived in during my freshman year of college was haunted. 
I also swear that all of this is 100% true. I don't talk about it because it sounds ridiculous, but it happened, and I can't explain it. The house was 120 years old. My room had a door to the attic that I kept locked. I had four other roommates who all swear they weren't messing with me. I was laying in bed one day, and I heard a super loud crash behind the door of the attic. I grabbed my big male roommate, and we opened the door together. At the bottom of the steps, there were six awkwardly shallow steps leading up to a bunch of that pink foam stuff in your typical attic, there was an old painting of some lady. We were creeped the hell out. Nobody had ever seen the painting before, let alone gone into the creepy attic. We put the painting in the corner of the attic where it could not fall and didn't think about it again. A few months later, I heard the same crash. I figured I dreamed or imagined it. Again, I opened the door and found the painting sitting there. This time I moved the painting into the basement. There were some shelves, and I just threw it in the back of the top shelf. A couple more months went by. Yet again, late one night, I heard the crash from behind the attic door. I thought to myself, no freaking way. Grabbed my roommate again and opened the door. There it was, that goddamn painting was sitting at the bottom of the steps again. I don't understand how. I kept the door to my room locked as well as the door to the attic. My roommates couldn't have gotten in there to play a prank. I truly don't understand it. After the third time, we took the painting out to the fire pit and burned it. Thankfully, all the creepy stuff stopped there. I moved the hell out of that house as soon as the lease was up. I can't explain what happened, I just know it was creepy as hell, and you could not convince me to go back there. My mother passed when I was 22. It was an accident and a shock. My husband and I went three states away to stay at her house for a bit to pack things up and settle her estate. I have always had really bad problems with my sinus. Well, the stress and everything got me sick, and I had a horrible sinus infection. I had medicine, and I was on the couch crying after looking everywhere for it. My husband was sitting next to me, holding me. Then we looked over on the table where the Bible was opened and the meds were sitting on the Bible. The Bible had been there earlier, closed. I remember sitting it there myself. My husband started freaking out because on the page it was open to a verse that was underlined. It was the only one in the whole book underlined. It said, and the grieving shall be comforted. I usually would not put any credence in this. I was sick and a mess. My husband was not. He is a very level-headed person when it comes to things like this. Also, quite a few other things happened for a while after that. I like to think my mother was trying to help me cope. I really hope she finally found peace, I did. I was babysitting my ex's niece when I was still with him at their family home. His sister went out with friends that night, and my ex was working, so I was alone with the baby and my ex's youngest sister, who was only two or so years younger than me. They lived out of the city on a dirt road, so they had a bunch of land. Their kitchen had large, beautiful windows that almost went from floor to ceiling, and you could see over the land where the horses were and some plains and stuff. During the day it was very serene looking out the window because there were no neighbors, nothing you could see more miles except serene tranquility. This setting changed at night. I was completely terrified of what all of this vast nothingness looked like in the dark. I couldn't see anything out there, but something could look in and see me. I distinctly remember getting a chill up my spine once the sun had set and shutting the curtains end to end that night I was babysitting. Once it got later in the evening and I was failing miserably at playing Morrowind on a terrible $300 ThinkPad laptop, I was not smart, I went into the kitchen to get a drink because it was time to take my meds. As soon as I stepped into the kitchen, I saw that the curtains were wide open. Not just a little bit, but end to end open. I've got ADHD, but I would not have left those freaking curtains open because their property genuinely scared the hell out of me at night. The baby was asleep, and my ex's sister didn't leave my sight all night either so no one would have opened those curtains. It haunts me dude. I think about it and get all woozy. I try to be rational, but I still just can't explain it. When I was 6 or 7, I was going to the bathroom, not bothering to close the door because no one else was home. My parents' room was directly across a narrow hallway from the bathroom, with their door being pretty close to being entirely open, with only clothes keeping it pushed slightly outward. From where I was, I could see the foot of my parents' bed, the wall on the left side of their bed, and the wall against which the door was, being nearly fully open, if that makes sense. Sitting silently, I see a black dress with no figure inside rise up from behind the left side of my parents' bed, proceed to float out to the front of the foot of the bed, 
appearing to float directly towards me, and float behind my parents' bedroom door. Completely silent, no body, no legs, feet, nothing, just a black dress. It floated not slowly, but not too quickly, like it didn't even know I was there and was just casually floating through the house. I was freaked the hell out. I finished my business and quickly jumped across the hall and slammed the door the other way, screaming out of fear in an attempt at being threatening. But nothing was there besides my mom's robes and pajamas. Since then, I was sure to close the door every time I went to the bathroom. And only recently have I begun going with the door open if no one else is home. And nearly every time I do, the thought of that goes through my head. I actually have a bunch of weird paranormal stories, but there's one that really creeps me out more than the others. I was about 13, sleeping over at my friend's mom's house. She lived in a duplex that the family lived in for 40 plus years. She had a couple of kid cousins over that weekend, so I didn't think of it when I saw a small blonde boy in a striped t-shirt come around the corner and peek into the room we were hanging out in. My friend asked me who I waved to, and I just said one of your little cousins. The next morning we went to the other side of the duplex where her grandparents lived, and I saw a picture on the wall of the little blonde boy with a striped t-shirt on, with in memory of written on it. I got a chill and asked her who it was, and she said, oh, that's my uncle, he got hit by a car right outside the house when he was seven, in the 80s, why? I told her that's the exact little boy I saw outside your room last night, and she just responded with, yeah, he likes to say hi to the family sometimes. I'm a big skeptic about this stuff, but I have one incident that I cannot explain. Normal weekday night, lying on the sofa watching whatever with the dog next to me. Next thing my DVD player kind of slides forward and tips over the edge of the shelf it was on, it was against the wall, it was a flat surface with no slope or leverage. I jumped up thinking, what the hell, but soon forgot and carried on watching TV. Maybe 5 to 10 minutes later the dog jumps down off the sofa and goes to the corner of the room and starts staring at the ceiling just above the DVD player. He is a very responsive dog normally, and I only have to say his name once and he comes running. For the next 20 to 30 minutes he would not even turn around to look at me. I called his name over and over and got nothing from him at all, he was in a strange trance the whole time, and even me patting him or getting a treat wouldn't snap him out of it. I started freaking out and actually filmed him for the last few minutes before he snapped out of it and came back to the sofa. I thought it may have been some insect nest or a spider or something, but any dog owner or expert can only guess what it was, it will bother me until the end of time. This incident is actually still very vivid in my mind. My family used to live in an apartment when I was in elementary school, and it was one of those apartments where you open the front door and there are just stairs that lead to the rest of the apartment. Keep this detail in mind as it will be very important. It was an open floor plan with a living room and kitchen in view once you went up the stairs and an opening to the hallway that led to two bedrooms on either side. My brother was in the corner on the computer playing games, and I was watching The Little Mermaid 2 on the TV along the same wall my brother's computer was set up against. I had a clear view of the hallway, and I remember seeing a silhouette of a woman run into the opening. She looked behind her and then ran into the room I shared with my brother. I was 8 at the time and couldn't exactly process the scene, so I just started freaking out because I thought a stranger had entered our room. I screamed at my brother to check for an intruder, and he begrudgingly walked away from playing games to go check while I waited in the living room, scared out of my mind. He apparently searched everywhere, including our closet and under the bed, but couldn't find anyone. However, I know what I saw. There's no way that it was the shadow of someone outside because our apartment was elevated with no outside balcony or walkway for someone to walk by. Our apartment also overlooked a one-story house, so there was no way it was from an apartment across. The only people home were my brother and me. This incident has lingered with me and still gives me chills today. When I was growing up, my mom had a wicker or straw angel decoration. It was as big as I was as an 8-year-old kid, and for some reason I always hated it. It was creepy, yes, but I got a weird or bad feeling in the pit of my stomach every time I looked at it or had to pass by it, and I always felt like it was watching me almost. When my parents divorced, my mom, of course, brought the angel with her when she moved out. And in our new house, there was a wall in the living room that had a rectangle cut out so you could see through it, and my mom hung the thing up in there, so it was kind of just hanging in free space. With it being there, I swear to God it would just move on its own, there were no vents or anything near it to move it if the furnace came on. One time I was sitting on the stairs, 
putting socks on or whatever. The stairs were across from the cutout wall with a set of two more stairs going down between them, and I would see the angel, originally being still, just slowly turn around all the way to face me and then stop, becoming absolutely still. It freaked me the hell out. It happened on multiple occasions, but I don't know how to explain why or how it happened. I mean, it could have been an overactive imagination as a kid, but the turning around and just stopping is really weird. Call BS if you want, but I know what I saw. I sincerely think my mother's house is haunted. Before I dive into my 18 plus years of experiences in that house, I was to preface this with the fact that the house only had two previous owners. It was built in the late 50s, sold to the next owners in the 70s, and left empty until my mother bought the house. The house itself was kept up to date by the second owners, a typical one-floor, three-bedroom suburban house in a flyover state. We moved into the house when I was freshly six years old, and I remember being really excited to finally have my own room since I had always shared one with my single mother. My mom bought me these really cool bunk beds, they weren't connected. I could move around the bottom bunk however I please, but I was solely focused on that top bunk for the thrill of being so high up that I could nearly touch my ceiling. We had lived in that house for a few months before my insomnia started. I started waking up in the middle of the night for no reason. At first I would just roll over onto my stomach and hum to myself until I fell back asleep. After a few weeks of this, I just started to sit up straight in my bed for no reason and stare into the hallway outside my door. I need to note that in my mother's house, there is the living room, kitchen, and dining room all connected, then a long thin hallway that leads you to all the rooms. The computer room is at the opening left of the hallway, next to that is my mother's bedroom door, and across the hall of her door was our only bathroom. My room was at the dead end of the hallway, so I liked to have my door wide open when I went to bed so I could watch my mom's TV shows in the living room while falling asleep. Anyways, I would wake up and just stare into that hallway with a feeling that I was being watched. At the time, I didn't know that was what I was feeling, it is only now that I am that I can recognize the motivation behind my behavior. I remember for almost a year, night after night, waking up and staring into the dark hallway of my mother's house until one night the head started showing. It started out as just a roundish shadow that would come out of the wall between my mother's bedroom door and the computer room bedroom door. It would slowly tilt forward, like checking for a coast clear, and recede back into the wall. The first time I witnessed this, I thought I was dreaming or imagining things. As time went on, the round shape started to peek its head out more, to the point where a thinner, longer shadow, looking like a neck, started to show up as well. The new pattern was that it would peek the head out and now look side to side down the hallway before disappearing again. At this point, I got scared and spent a long time refusing to sit up because I didn't want to see the shadow anymore. For a while I stopped waking up, and things were normal again for me. I completely forgot about those nights staring into the hallway for hours. I don't know how old I was when I saw the shadow again, I know I was still little enough that my child's bunk bed still felt like California King. I had woken up again in the middle of the night. I assumed it was because I had to go to the bathroom, so I sat up, ready to leave my bed, when I saw it. This time it was a head, neck, and now an upper chest. I froze in fear, scared that if I breathed too loud or moved too quickly, it would turn to face me, and unfortunately it did. The thing slowly, and I am not kidding, walked out of my mother's walls, turned to face me, and walked to my door frame. The shadow just stood there as we had a staring contest for what I am sure was only a few minutes but felt like forever. I think normal kids would cry for their parents, but I knew my mom. I knew she would be upset and tell me to not be stupid, monsters aren't real. I laid down and went under my covers until the next morning, quietly crying until my fear dissipated. After that night I started sleeping with my door closed. I also stopped cleaning up my floor before bed and, in opposition, started covering my floor with toys in order to deter the shadow from being able to sneak around in my room. I still woke up every night until I was about 11 or 12, but I never opened my door or left that room. Things went back to normal, and I convinced myself everything I went through as a little girl was BS, I imagined it all, and my insomnia was probably due to my ADHD medication my school convinced my mom to put me on. I never saw the shadow again, but things started to get weird again once I was a teenager, and it got more violent the older I became. Long story short, multiple people who are not friends with one another have been in my house and seen a woman in a blue dress and then told me about it later. I don't tell anyone else about it, not even my husband, 
Because it doesn't bother anything. No big deal right? Anywho, I myself have seen her twice. The first time I woke up in the middle of the night and saw her leaning over the baby's crib. I immediately sat up, and she just faded away. I felt crazy because I didn't know anyone else had seen her at the time. The next day I went to Walmart, and some lady walked by me and said, she likes the baby. I stop and ask what she said, and she says, the woman in your house, she likes the baby. Loki peed my pants and ran home.